There now appears to be a way to kill a hurricane's power by transferring its energy into electricity. According to his advanced climate weather computer model, Stanford researcher Mark Jacobson found that installing massive offshore wind turbine farms in the path of a hurricane diminishes hurricane wind speeds by up to 92 miles per hour and storm surge by up to 79%. The way we carried out this experiment was through numerical modeling of the atmosphere. And so we ran simulations for three different hurricanes, Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Isaac, and Hurricane Sandy. We ran simulations uh, without turbines present and then with turbines present. And in fact, we have results here. So on the left side in both cases are Hurricane Katrina. As it hits land, it starts to dissipate. It's causing damage over land. Now, if you add turbines, we added uh, tens of thousands of turbines in this triangular region up here. And you can see initially that these turbines are reducing the wind speed significantly. And you can see that once the hurricane hits over land that the hurricane has dissipated almost entirely in that region downwind of the turbines. The catch is that the simulation used 300 gigawatts of installed wind turbine capacity when the biggest offshore wind farm man has built to this point is the London Array at only 630 megawatts of installed capacity, nearly 500 times smaller than the one Jacobson used in the model. Plus, the London Array cost $3 billion, so scaling up to a wind farm the size of which was used in the study would cost hundreds of billions of dollars to build. But think of the different problems this could simultaneously eliminate. Hurricane Sandy caused over $80 billion in damages, as did Katrina, which basically wiped out New Orleans. With climate change making these storms more intense and more frequent, one idea to protect cities has been the construction of giant seawalls at a cost ranging from 10 to $30 billion per city. But a giant wind farm could protect entire regional coastlines while paying for itself through the energy it produces and the CO2 emissions it's reducing. A 300 gigawatt array, like the one in the study, would create enough electricity to power around 100 million homes. If building one of these mega farms could stop the threat of hurricanes in the region and provide the power for a large portion of the country in a clean, renewable way, why would we not take a hard look at this? If we're going to solve these big 21st century problems, we need to start thinking boldly. We should build off Mark Jacobson's study with a much more in-depth examination to both confirm these findings and to make sure that stopping hurricanes wouldn't have unintended negative consequences on the ecosystem more broadly. But if the data continues to look as good as it does right now, I say we go for it and construct two 300 gigawatt arrays, one in the Gulf of Mexico and one off the eastern seaboard.